Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at Red Alert Space Fleet Warfare. This is put out by, uh, designed by Richard Borg, put out by PSC Games, Plastic Soldier Company Games. And uh, it is another installment in the Command & Colors system of games, uh, which is populated by Command & Colors Ancients, Command & Colors Medieval, um, there is Battle Lore, uh, Battle Cry, Memoir 44. So this is another installment in that system. Uh, so it's going to be using a lot of the same mechanisms. And so I'm going to kind of gloss over some of that in the, uh, uh, the explanation part of the video. But we'll hit some of the nuances that this game offers to that system. Uh, so let's get down to the table. We'll take a look, see how it works, and we'll come back with some final thoughts after that. Let's hit it. Generally speaking, the, the goal of the game is going to be determined by the scenario-specific rules. Sometimes you're going to be getting points for holding certain objective areas on the battlefield. You're going to get points for uh, destroying certain kinds of units. So, for example, if you destroy this heavy fighter unit, you're going to be getting two points uh, for that. Whereas if you uh, destroy this flagship over here, you're going to be getting eight points for that. And usually the scenarios will give you a point total that you're trying to get to or a number of units destroyed or a number of objectives held. It just depends on the scenario specific thing. Uh, but whoever gets to that game ending goal first is the winner. In the course of getting to that goal, uh, each person is going to be taking a turn. A turn consists of playing one of your command cards, carrying out whatever it is supposed to do, conducting combat possibly at range or in close quarters, whatever might be the case taking casualties, and then you're also going to have a phase where you can uh, take up some star points and combat cards. You can either take two star points or two combat cards or one of each, and then you're going to draw up the command card to replace the one that you played, and then it'll be your opponent's turn. So at the beginning of the turn, let's say it is the uh, Common Commonwealth's turn against the, Feder the Confederation, and we're going to go ahead and play Coordinated Advance. Now, Coordinated Advance gives me the ability, as I alluded to earlier, to, uh, to order two units that are in the middle. So here are two units that are in the middle of the battlefield right now. And then it also allows me to order one unit on this side of the field, which is on the other side of this line right here. So they're going to be, be, be able to be ordered. And if I have another one on this side of the battlefield over here, I can also order them. But for this purpose, we don't. We're just going to be ordering uh, two here and this guy here. And we're going to carry out, first of all, movement and then combat, whatever it might be. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and carry out a move order here. But as I'm doing that, I'm going to play a a combat card which says play this card when ordering a unit. The ordered unit may move at warp speed up to three hexes and engage in close quarters. Combat uh, with its normal combat dice unit may not engage in ranged combat. So in order to play this card I have to pay two star points so I'm going to use that from my cash and now this unit that I'm ordering can move three hexes and then battle. So what we're going to do here is the flagship unit will go one two three and end up right over here. Now the flagship unit is a special unit that has fighters as its cap and then it comes with it whenever this guy takes damage you first of all will remove these guys first once all these guys are gone you damage this again then you have to re-roll to confirm the attack and if you get uh, certain faces on the die on that second roll then he'll be removed so these guys are really kind of tough uh, but he goes with it the heavy fighter here is going to uh, move one and uh, let's see here, we're gonna go move one like this right here, and that will be that, then we'll engage right here. Now, before I continue with movement, I do think I need to speak about line of sight here for just a second, uh, because as this unit was here, it had line of sight on this heavy destroyer unit here, but it did not have line of sight on this heavy cruiser unit because they were not part of this planetary system that's right here. Conversely, the heavy cruiser did not have line of sight on this guy either because it crosses over here. 
Same thing with this heavy cruiser unit here. These guys do not have line of sight on the heavy destroyer unit because this hex right here blocks the line of sight and they're not in that planetary system. But the fighters did because they were in this planetary system. All right, so that's one thing that we need to make sure. I could have attacked from here, but why not? We're gonna go ahead and move in. And the heavy fighter here, as you can see, has a base movement of four. And then in close quarters combat, it's rolling three dice. Anything other than that is one. So that's another reason why I went ahead and moved closer is because uh, uh, here they would be rolling three, but here they're only rolling one. But if I move and then attack, I'm rolling three dice in that close quarters battle. So that is that. We're going to go ahead and do that. Now we're going to uh, move our last uh, unit here. And he's instead of moving around, he's going to move up into it. The special thing about moving onto a planet system, though, is that you have to be adjacent to it before you begin your move, then you can move on. So if this unit was back here, they would not be able to go one, two with their normal movement because they didn't start adjacent to it. But because we are adjacent to it, we can go ahead and move right in just like this. And uh, those guys in the heavy destroyers on the uh, Confederation side are having a bad day at this point. So with my first attack over here, we're going to be rolling uh, two, base two plus three, so that's five dice. We're going to be rolling, and we need to roll whatever the symbol is on that, on that uh, token over there. So we're looking for green circles, and then we also can score hits on these little burst symbols here as well. Uh, some of the other things that are here is if you roll this face, you get to generate more star points. Or if you roll this face, the red alert face, you actually could make them retreat. Possibly, as long as you've scored at least one hit on them, you could uh, make them retreat. But we'll get to that in just a few moments to see if that will actually happen. So here we're going to roll five dice and see what happens. Okay, that wasn't necessarily a bad roll. Not exactly what I wanted to roll, but I did score one hit. This is a miss because we're not shooting at a uh, capital or strike ship. And um, uh, we're not st shooting at a strike class. That's what that is. But I do get to generate, wow, three star points, which is the currency for playing more of these combat cards. So that is helpful. We'll put that right back over here. And we do score one hit against these guys, and that will be paid for by losing that one fighter. Now, generally speaking, um, if I wanted to, the Confederation player could pay two star points and attack back. But since they do have a battle back combat card, they're going to pay one star point for that. So we're going to lose one star point here. And then it says, uh, play this while you're battling back. Only spend one star instead of two uh, to battle back. And they're going to get an additional die. So he's rolling three dice base normally, but this card will give him an extra one. So that will be rolling four dice back into the flagship. So we're going to go ahead and roll these. And we have one red alert. Uh, we have two star points. And then we also have a hit. So normally this would be a, a successful red alert attack because I've scored one damage um, and I've rolled one alert to go with it. So that would mean a red alert token is about to be added and they're going to have to retreat back two spaces. But because this is a flagship, they're able to ignore one red alert. And this one does go through because it's not a burst. If this was a burst, he would also be able to ignore this because it's coming from a uh, unit that has a uh, less superior armor class. But because this was a this, we do have to remove one cap fighter uh, as we've taken a hit. This one gets ignored because it's a flagship and it can ignore one red alert. But uh, the Confederation player does get to generate two more star points because of those dice that they rolled. And that's the conclusion of that battle right there, or at least that part of the battle. Over here, we have the heavy fighters that are going to be rolling three dice against the heavy destroyer unit. And so they're going to roll three 
like this, and they did not score any hits whatsoever, but they did get another star token, so that's good. Um, but that's the end of their thing. Now, these guys have the opportunity to pay two more star points to, to battle back, and we are going to do that, because why not? And they're going to get three dice, and those three dice are gonna be leveled here, looking for green circles. And there are no green circles, but we did get a burst token. So that is uh, the death of one fighter, and they do get a star point back as well. So that's the end of this. And now the heavy cruisers are also going to attack the heavy destroyers over here. And they're going to be rolling three dice and seeing what happens here. And we've got one hit and one more star point. So this comes over here for me. And one of these destroyers are done. And they're feeling kind of spunky. So this time they're gonna pay two more and attack back. And that's three dice against the heavy cruiser units. And wow, that would have been devastating for the fighters. But for the cruisers, it's only one hit, which is still pretty bad, but not nearly as bad as three. At this point, what I would be able to do is draw more cards or star points or a combination of the two. I think I'm going to draw one combat card and I'm going to draw one star point card, or I could have done two cards and two star points, but I think we'll, we're, we're doing pretty good with our economy here, so I wanted to just get more cards to see what I can play with. Then I would draw one command card to replace the one that I had, and now it would be my opponent's turn to carry out a turn in a very similar fashion. And that's how the game flows until one of those game-ending scenario-specific rules or uh, conditions are met. Now, I mentioned about destroying units as a way to get points. Um, another way that you can get points is by holding uh, planetary system hexes. Whenever you move on to a planetary system hex, you'll take one of your tokens and place it here, denoting that you, you are uh, exhibiting your control over that area. And uh, what's gonna happen here is at the beginning of your next turn, for each of these that are still out on the board, you're going to get an extra point. So holding these objectives, so to speak, is a way to speed up the end of the game a little bit because you're gonna be generating points every single turn. And of course, that'll make your opponent kind of push towards those areas. Other uh, space features that we do need to talk about, these asteroid fields will block line of sight, but they kind of act like forests where you can fly into them. Uh, while you're in them, there's a possibility you're gonna be taking some damage, uh, but you can then move out of them as well. Uh, whenever a capital ship is destroyed, this capital ship debris field will be put in there, and now that's an impossible area, including if you have to retreat, that would not be a viable choice for you to go back through. Uh, so there is that. Um, red alert tokens can also be bad. Uh, whenever you have units that get red alert tokens placed on them, they will have negative effects to their turns. Uh, but it's another thing that you can spend star points on to remove them. It'll cost two points to remove one, one red alert token from an ordered unit, and then it'll, it'll cost one star point to remove it from a unit that has not been ordered. So it's another thing that you can use star points for. Uh, the economy is really cool because uh, you can use these star points to add one to your movement. Uh, you can add, uh, you can use them to uh, disregard some of these red alert tokens if you're gonna take them. So it's kind of like ignoring flags in the other uh, iterations of the Command of Color system. So uh, there's a lot of diversity with this economy. It's not just for using these cards. It can also help you boost some of the very basic actions of the game. But generally speaking, that's how you play Red Alert. Let's get to my final thoughts. So that's about that for Red Alert Space Fleet Warfare. Uh, this is, again, uh, a system that I enjoy. So with that having been said, you know I'm probably going to give it a positive review, and it really is. Uh, but there are some nuances that I do want to highlight and talk about in my pros and cons section. So let's go ahead and get to that. So my first pro of the game is that star point system. I really do enjoy it because it feels like a little bit more of an integral part of the system than just something that's been tacked onto it. Not only can you use the star points for uh, purchasing those cards and using the abilities that they will afford you, you can also use them to boost, magnify, or even utilize some of the more basic actions in the game. So 
that becomes a more integral part of the game because you really do need to make sure that you have those star points available uh, during the course of the game. It's another phase at the end of your turn, uh, which means that uh, you're going to have to be thinking about that on a more constant basis rather than just every once in a while. Ah, it's okay. I can ignore that because eh, it doesn't really matter. No, star points are a huge part of the uh, of this game, and I really enjoy that because I think it, it gives you more strategic and more tactical uh, abilities throughout the course of the game. So the star point system is a definite thumbs up for me. Another pro for the game are the uh, player aids that come with the game. Uh, I didn't show them during the instructional part, but these player aids are incredibly helpful. Uh, on this side, it shows you all of the different scenario possibilities for when you have red alert tokens, uh, when you're giving out red alert tokens, that kinds of thing. And then on this side, you're also going to have all of the information that you need for all of the ships that are in there. And this is very handy. It's very uh, accessible. In addition to this, all of the unit tokens have all the information that you need to play the game on them. For example, movement is given there, the kind of uh, unit that they are, whether it's the uh, triangle, the circle, or the square, uh, that's on the, the token as well. There, how many dice you're going to roll at all of the different ranges is also right there on the cards, uh, on the token. So the, the very simple ways that they were able to help the players stay engaged in the game is very cool. Because when you have to kind of break your engagement with the game to look through the rule book and find this and find that, or uh, go to a chart and find this and all this other kind of it really kind of messes up your uh, thematic engagement. Uh, and they've done, I think, everything that they possibly could do to help not break that. And that's a good thing for me. My third pro of the game is that the overall component quality of the game is good. Um, I'm not going to say it's great because I am going to have some caveats in my con section about some of the components. But overall, we are, we're talking about good component quality. The miniatures themselves of the ships are very sturdy. If you're breaking these things, you're doing something wrong because they are very sturdy. They're solid miniatures. You're not going to break uh, the actual miniatures themselves. And that's a good thing. The other tiles that make up the different space features, the asteroid fields, the planetary systems, and all that kind of stuff, those are very, uh, very thick stock, and they are durable. They're going to stand the test of time, I think. Um, now, with them being a darker uh, borders and having darker, it might show wear a little bit more. But I think, generally speaking, if you just use common uh, sense, I guess you could say, in taking care of your game, I think you should be fine because you're not going to be touching or, or manipulating uh, those space features often. So unfortunately, we do have to talk about some cons for the game. And uh, uh, let's, let's just go ahead and get into it. My first con of the game are the bases that were employed for uh, the different miniatures that come in the game. I mentioned that the miniatures are solid. They're not going to break. I don't think so. If you break them, eh, you need to reevaluate your handling of the game, probably because these are pretty solid miniatures. But the base and these two posts that come up out of the uh, base and into the bottom of the ships, I really don't like these things at all. Uh, first of all, I think you don't need two of them. The reason I think that is because as I was uh, assembling some of these for the playthrough, um, I was having trouble getting these posts to fit up inside these little holes that are in the ship. And so as, you know, in my zeal, so to speak, uh, this little... Uh, part of this stick got broke off inside of this. So I was like, okay, well, can't use that anymore. I wonder if it'll work like this. And guess what? It absolutely does work like this. It's not top heavy or anything like that. So you really could have used only one post. Center it in the bottom of this of, of the mini, and you could actually cut this in half so that it's I don't know, it's not as big. One of the things that I had a problem with this miniature base is that it covers up so much of the hex that you're on. Uh, so a lot of that aesthetic quality uh, from the artwork that's on the, uh, the tiles is just being covered up by the bases of the models. Why not make these clear or something to that effect? Um, or make them smaller and make them clear. I just did not like the bases or these. My second con really has to do with the models themselves. 
not the quality of them, but the look of them. Because if you have a picture of the different ships that are on either side of the board, a lot of the ships look very similar. The only difference is how big they are. Uh, so a battleship looks a lot like a cruiser, except the cruiser is just a little bit smaller. The destroyer looks a lot like a cruiser, except it's just a little bit smaller. Now, fortunately, they did have the, the tokens out there that gave you the names of all of the units. And I'm sure over the course of time, it's going to be second nature to you. But it's really kind of makes the makes it a little bit more difficult to get into the game if, if all of your units look so similar. They're just different sizes. And then really my final con with the game is the the, the footprint that it has. I mean, I am I'm having this set up on a rather large Rascaler's table that has a pretty good sized inset portion of the table and the board just doesn't fit. It's too big. Now it's only about four, maybe five inches too big, but it's still too big. If I want to use this entire sheet of, of a board, I have to put all of these table slats on and play on top of the wood, which it's again first world problems I understand but still it's annoying because the footprint is just slightly too big for this big table if you're gonna play this you're gonna have to put two of the you know the plastic lifetime tables together um, so you're talking about a footprint the size of like TI4 for a two-player game and that's just not cool for me in addition kind of along the same uh, contact here I do not like the material here. This is basically like a, a not, not nylon, but it's a very silky-esque type of material. It's very smooth, but it's, it's also very flimsy. Um, you almost have to iron this for it to lay flat on the board. Otherwise, you're going to have folds of space all over your, your battlefield. And uh, I wish it had been a neoprene mat. I know it's more expensive, but it would have been a better quality and it would have fostered better play. An addition, and, and uh, I just go back to it, I wish it just had been smaller. Yeah, we have to use smaller ships, but that's okay. Yeah, we have to use uh, smaller uh, space features, but that's okay. It would have been easier, it would have been more accessible. So all in all, I did enjoy the game. These cons that I mentioned were just little nitpicks that I wish they had simply done better. I like this game a lot. I like this system a lot. And I did enjoy how we played this. And I liked the star point system. I liked how the red alerts handled uh, the retreating and all of that kind of stuff. And how it carried more thematic sense in it to it just, than just saying, okay, he turns around and runs away. Uh, no, it, it, it's, it's more thematic. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. It still gets my approval. But I wish they would have done some, some of the things a little bit different. I think for those of you who have the space and the time and all of that type, you're going to enjoy this a lot. It's, it's, it's a great iteration of the game, but I wish they had just done some things different. So that's it for me, a 7 out of 10, a seal of approval. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.